I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. We is the true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. As we come to the faith clinic this morning, I want to talk about the blood of Jesus. The blood is shed for you. The blood is shed for me. And the blood is shed for the whole of humanity. We're looking at the benefits of his blood. The benefits of the blood of Jesus Christ. Effectively, the benefits of his death. The benefits of his sacrifice. The benefits of his provision. Coming from Calvary. Here he tells us, we now have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Look at that in verse 19 again. It's talking to the brethren. It's talking to the people that know the value, the efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ. And it says we have boldness. What gives us the boldness? Now we can come into the very presence of God and we can come to the holiest place of the Lord. He's telling us we can come not just to the outer court of the sanctuary, not just to the premises of the sanctuary. We can come into the holy place itself. We can come into the holy of holies. We can come to the holiest. We can get saved. We can get sanctified. We can be made holy. We can be made godly and righteous. And we can have the power of God in our lives. Our boldness to claim the promises of the Lord. I've been there for brethren. Boldness to enter. And there is no uh, uncertainty. There is no doubt. There is no unbelief. And there is no suggestion as if. What if it does not happen? What if we try to enter and we're driven back? It says we have the assurance to enter. We have the boldness to enter and we have the uh, promises of the Lord. We can easily come unto him. Boldness to enter into the holiest. How do we do that? By the blood. The blood that saves. The blood that cleanses. The blood that transforms our lives. And the blood that provides all the benefits of redemption. Boldness to enter so that we can have that blood paving the way for us. And it goes on in verse 20. It says, it's by a new and living way, which he has consecrated, set apart for you and for me, for us. And it says, it's through the veil that is to say, is flesh. The body was broken for you. The body was pierced for you. And the blood gushed out just for you. And it goes on to say, we're now having him as our high priest. It stands between us and God. He represents God to us. And he represents us to God. He says, because of what he has done already, let us draw near with a true heart. We go back to Calvary. If there is any sin in our lives, we confess. And we forsake. We get rid of them. And now we can come with a true heart. A clean heart. A pure heart. An honest heart. In full assurance of faith. That means there's no iota of doubt in us because we have that full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled, washed, cleansed, 
as with pure water, and then from evil conscience we now have that boldness that not guilt nor condemnation can hinder. Let us hold fast the, the profession declaration of our faith without wavering because he is faithful that promised. As we come to chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. It says, But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. Good things to come. In the sense that the blessings were received in the new covenant. They're greater than the blessings they received in the old covenant. They had a lot. They received a lot. And they benefited a lot from the sacrifices they made. Because God commanded them to make those sacrifices. And he gave them the promise that if this was done, was going to also do that in their lives. And it says now that we in the new covenant we have something greater, something higher, something more beautiful, something more wonderful. It says we have greater benefits. And those are the benefits we're looking at today. It says it's by greater and a more perfect tabernacle not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. Verse 12, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He has obtained redemption for us. And he has obtained that redemption by that one sacrifice for generations after Calvary. For generations after he died on the cross of Calvary. Until this day, in fact, until we enter into eternity. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ever sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh. Again, it's returning to the old covenant. And that if the blood of animals did the cleansing and did the conversion and did the purification at that time, how much more? In verse 14, how much more? It makes you to expect more from the blood of Jesus Christ. It makes you to expect more from the sacrifice of Jesus Christ than you could ever get under the old covenant. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience. Purge your heart. Purge your inner man. Purge your spirit. Purge your soul. How much more will the blood of Jesus Christ purge you and purge you internally to the point you are clean without any blemish at all from dead works to serve the living God. It tells us in verse 22, verse 22, chapter 9, verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. It's talking about the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ is no removal of sin, is no remission, no forgiveness, is no redemption, is no salvation. Only through that blood can we have salvation today. We're looking at three points under this uh, topic benefits through his blood. Number one, peace and pardon through his blood. Peace and pardon. Through his blood. The sinner is guilty. The sinner is condemned. There is no peace, says the Lord, to the wicked. How can you have peace then? How can you come into the peace of the Lord? It's the peace of God. The peace that passes understanding through the blood that is shed for you on the cross of Calvary. And pardon. He forgives. Because except those sins are forgiven. The little ones and the big ones. The public ones and the private ones. The known ones and the secret ones. Except they are pardoned. 
you will not be able to get to the kingdom of God and so to have the salvation of the Lord and to be so clear, so clean and to be so prepared, you are able to enter, you need the pardon of the Lord and that comes through the blood of Jesus. Peace and pardon through his blood. Number two, purity and power through his blood. Purity and power through his blood. He removes that Adamic nature. He removes that tendency to want to sin. He removes the liking to sin. The desire to sin. And purifies us so that we are not just holy and righteous externally. Outwardly. But inwardly we are holy. Inwardly we are pure. Because he removes that sin within us. That is very root of sin. The root of bitterness. And the root of evil, purity and power through his blood. And then number three, we have protection and provision through his blood. All we need for this life, all we need for godliness, all we need to make us victorious in every way, he has given us through the blood of the Lamb, protection and provision through his blood. We come to number one. Peace and pardon through his blood. Peace and pardon through his blood. You understand how important peace is. Without peace, what can you do in life? You have a confused mind, an agitated mind, a condemned mind, a guilty soul, a guilty heart. How far can you go if you are followed by the shadow of your sin? You cannot have peace. But when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, turn away from that sin. Repent of that sin. And then you apply to the efficacy and to the sufficiency of the blood of Jesus Christ. Pardon comes and peace comes. In Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Reading from verse 23. It says, For all have sinned. All have sin. You have not all committed all the sins of the other people, but you have committed your own sins. Not everybody sins the same way. Different people commit different sins. And it says all have sinned. The small, the great, the lowly, the high, the educated, the uneducated, all have sinned. And so everybody has become guilty. Sin means guilt. Sin brings condemnation. Sin brings judgment. And sin attracts heaven's punishment. All have sin, and so all are liable to the guilt, the condemnation, the punishment, and the judgment because of sin. For all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Be justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation that means an atonement an acceptable sacrifice through faith in his blood you see that through faith in his blood you understand he died for you he took your place and because he died for you and he took your place that's why you can have that peace that's why you can have the pardon. It's through the atonement he made. It's through the sacrifice he made. You've come to the Lord. You're telling the Lord, I merit death. The soul that sinners, it shall die. But I thank you, Lord, because you love me so much. And you sent Jesus Christ to take my place. Jesus Christ to be my substitute. He bore my sorrows. He bore my sin. He bore my punishment. He bore my evil. He bore the consequence of everything I have done. And because of that, because of that sacrifice, because of that substitution, and because of sin bearing activity that happened on the cross, I can now come and I can take his place. As he has taken my place. Look at it again from verse 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth is God himself 
that appointed him, that set him forth, that ordained him, and that approved him to be the propitiation, the sacrifice, the atonement, the redeemer through faith in his blood. As you have faith in his blood now, the benefit of Calvary comes to you. And the benefit of that forgiveness comes to you. The benefit of that redemption becomes yours. He says to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. The sins you have committed in the past. The sins that are past. The sins you have uh, doubled into secretly or publicly. The sins of the past is now able to place. It's now able to remove. Is now able to forgive because you have faith in his blood. It says through the forbearance of God. To declare verse 26, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. What does that mean? That he might be just. What it means is you committed sin. Or you committed sins in the plural. And you are guilty for every one of them. You committed sin against the eternal law of God, the great law of God, the supernatural power of God then has the ability to punish that sin with eternal punishment. And because you have come to Jesus and you tell the Almighty God, He bore my sin, Jesus has taken my sin away. God to be just can only punish sin once. And because he's punished on Christ, that sets you free. That's what it means that he is just. And now he's the justifier of them that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be justified by faith. Remember? is the justifier of him that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the one that sets him free. He has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was guilty, but because he applied unto the Heavenly Father, because of Jesus, on the merits of Jesus, on the uh, sacrifice of Jesus, because of that, he is now justified. He believes, and justification has come. He will not be punished again. The Lord has taken the guilt and the condemnation away. Verse 1, chapter 5. Therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God. Before that, to you, God was the judge. He was the one that will punish your sin. But now because you have come through the blood, you have been pardoned. You have been forgiven. That sin has been taken away. The guilt is gone. The condemnation is gone. Because of that, now you see him as father. And you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 6 there. That chapter 5. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. That means he died for everybody. Because everybody was, was sinful. Everybody was ungodly. And because everyone was ungodly, and he has died for the ungodly, he died for you. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, by adventure for a good man, some would even dare venture to die. But God commendeth his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's not waiting until you turn over a new leaf before the death can be effective, efficacious in your life. It's not waiting until you can make yourself better. He is the one to make you better. He is the one to forgive you. He is the one to set you free. He is the one to cleanse you. He is the one to punch you. You can come just as you are. But he will not send you away just as you are. He will forgive. He will set free. He will transform your life. He will change your life. He will make you a new creature in Christ. 
Transformation comes without forgiveness. Renewal comes without forgiveness. Regeneration. That it makes you a new afresh. That comes without forgiveness. Then it says in verse 9, much more than being justified by his blood. Underline that your Bible. By his blood, he justifies. By his blood, he saves. By his blood, he transforms your life. Be justified by his blood. We shall be saved from loss through him. That's a, bene a great benefit. Eternal wrath is taken away. Eternal sojourn in hell is taken away. Eternal punishment is taken away. The wrath of God is removed because of that atonement of Jesus Christ. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's talking about our redemption. That's talking about the forgiveness, the pardon, the peace, the relationship, reconciliation that we now have with the almighty God because of the sacrifice of Jesus because of the shedding of the blood of Jesus for us. Ephesians chapter 1. In Ephesians chapter 1, reading from verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Think of redemption. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Forgiveness is in that redemption. Peace of God is in that redemption. Freedom is in that redemption. Actually, the word redemption comes from the fact of people being sold into slavery. And anybody that comes to redeem them, to take them, to rescue them from that slavery is called the Redeemer. And what they have gone through that is the redemption. And it says, you know, we have redemption. We have the freedom. It sets us free from the power of sin, from the hold of sin. It sets us free from the hold of Satan. It sets us free from the imprisonment and from the enslavement of sin. That's what it says there. It gives us redemption, forgiveness, freedom, liberty. Now we can have dominion because we are no more slaves of sin. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. If you have not got that, I believe that today has to come to the Lord and you turn away from evil and say, Lord, this is what I want, total redemption, so that I will not continue being a slave to sin, a slave to bad habits, a slave to evil, a slave to all the lives I've lived in the past. He will do it for you. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians chapter 2, reading here from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 11. He grants us pardon. He grants us forgiveness. He grants us peace. He grants us reconciliation with God. He grants us total serenity, peace of mind. Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 11, wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time before redemption, at that time before the pardon, at that time before justification, at that time, before you were cleansed with the blood of Jesus Christ. At that time, before you applied the full efficacy of the blood of Jesus Christ in your soul, in your spirit, in your life. But because at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God, in the world see the state of the sinner the state of the one that is not redeemed yet 
the state of the one that has not applied the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. You see the stage in which they are, it says they are without Christ, without the covenant of promise, and without the privilege of Calvary. And then it says without God in this world. It says, but now, when you come to Christ, but now, when you repent, but now, when you turn away from your sin, but now, when you realize the blood of Jesus can make you clean, it says, but now, when you realize there's salvation in Christ, it says, but now, when you realize you don't have to perish, you don't have to be without God, without Christ, without salvation, it says, but now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nice by the blood of Christ. That's reconciliation. Made nice by the blood of Christ. Reconciled by the blood of Christ. Forgiven by the blood of Christ. Brought into the presence of God. By the blood of Christ. Brought into relationship with God. By the blood of Christ. That's the only thing that can bring you into relationship with God. Because a sinner cannot maintain relationship with God. God is holy. God is righteous. God is pure. And you are separated from God. Your sin separates you from God. But the blood of Jesus Christ that provides forgiveness, the blood of Jesus Christ that grants that reconciliation is the one thing that brings you peace with the Lord. It goes on in verse 13, verse 14, for he is